we would expect a lot of volatility here. And I believe Mike is, is spot on. You know, I think there was a better chance, pot odds would say, is a better chance we hit 30 in the VIX this week than getting down to 15. I do think long term, like for the last 10 years, every single year we've been trading sub 15. That has not happened, obviously, since early part of last year. But the odds sort of favor the idea at rich valuations and uh, earnings reports where you already have high expectations that you could see some profit taken. And I think you saw that. I, I don't know that anyone could have guessed the catalyst for a lot of this. I think many people thought there would be inflation readings. The number you got this morning from the core PCE number was relatively hot and in line with people's expectations as we go forward. So that certainly added some pressure. You saw the Russell outperform the NASDAQ, and I think that has a lot to do with the higher interest rates. You've seen a positive correlation with the Russell to higher interest rates. Victor, we were really curious in, in getting your take on the amazing action that we've seen in GameStop and ANC and some of these these stocks that retail traders are piling into and crushing the short sellers. You run a platform like like yep. Robinhood, right, that caters to the retail trader. What are you seeing and, and what do you make look, of it all? Look, it was a pivotal moment for us. It was a very difficult decision. But what we ultimately decided is that believing in market access is not a marketing slogan. It's a principle. And we believe in market access and we chose to stand on those principles so we allowed trading in these underlying names uh, our clearing firm though yesterday notified us midday that they were setting them briefly to closing only or they notified us they were going to closing only they reversed that decision and by the end of the day we were offering access to the markets and i want to be really clear we're not endorsing participation in these names but we were we also knew the message it would send to our customer base. We know how they're feeling. Look, this is a generation of people. We share everything. We share our cars, cards, excuse me. We share our houses. We share our capital. And now they share their strategies. And I think they feel like they're inter interacting with a group of institutions who are not willing to share the wealth. And we wanted them to know that we were an ally. And for that, they rewarded us with their business. We've done a month worth of account mm -hmm. openings in a single day. But, Victor, I think I'm also right in saying that you didn't have to handle anywhere near the same amount of volume in some of these stocks as, as the likes of. Understand that Robinhood perhaps was, was forced into making that decision? Or, or are you saying right here and now that uh, Vlad took a different uh, decision, which he had uh, different options and uh, different paths he could have gone down? What I'm saying is I understand the risks at play here. I understand that there are very difficult factors at play for these decisions, and they're different for every individual brokerage firm. What I mean by that is, look, going self-clearing in the first couple of years of the business has, has benefits, but it also has some risks. And I think the growing pains that they found out over the last couple of weeks are the risks of being a self-clearing business. We've partnered with Apex Clearing, the same as our sister brokerage firm, Tastyworks, which allowed us to concentrate on our customers' needs, on their desires, on what they wanted us to do, while also protecting risk to the firm. So I'll, the way we've managed our business, um, you know, we're, we're proud of and we're proud of the decisions that we made this week. What are you telling new customers when it comes to trading options? And is, is that where you're seeing a bulk of the activity, as we've seen around some of these names? It's in these Reddit names has actually been stock. And so what we've been doing is concentrating on education. I don't believe restrictions are the answer here. It's informing a new generation of enthused participants. This is a teachable moment here. You know, talking about the fact that these stocks have 600 percent implied volatility, what that means is to not think about upside possibility, people, because when's the last time you actually walked into the store at GameStop yourself? When's the last time you went to a movie theater instead of turning on Netflix or Disney Plus? The point is, at 600 percent implied volatility, it means the risk is it could just as easily touch 55 as it could touch 50 on the upside. And we chose to use this as a teachable moment to introduce risk, risk concepts and quantifiable finance and, and strategies to people. And um, I think they are appreciating it. We, we don't know how this story ends, um, but we are managing the risk as best as we can. And at the end of the day, what we found is people actually responded to not being able to get access to these instruments. They were more upset about that than they actually had the desire to participate in these names. We are talking about managing in our systems a thousand orders over the last couple of days, each individual day. So the risk to us is minimal, but the opportunity on the upside to inspire a new generation is immense. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.